Our service begins with the confession on the first page of your bulletin. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with the people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with, with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear my teaching, all my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times, that which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us. We will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works he has done. He worked marvels in the sight of their forefathers, in the land of Egypt, in the land of the stolen zone. He split open the sea and let them pass through. He made the waters stand up like walls. He led them with a cloud by day and all the night through with a glow of fire. He split the hard rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as from the great deep. He brought streams out of the cliff, and the waters gushed out like rivers. A reading from Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I'll ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Is Yahweh with us or not? Is God among us or not? The people of Israel have been in bondage in Egypt, and uh, they have been enslaved there for generations, and God has sent Moses and equipped them, and through a series of events and trials and plagues upon the Egyptian people, they have finally found release, and they have escaped, and they have gone out of Egypt, and the Pharaoh said, get out of here, but then later changed his mind and sent an army after them. And then the people are trapped between this Pharaoh's army behind them and the Red Sea in front of them until Moses takes a staff and raises it up and the waters part and they go through onto the other side. And then the waters crash back together and drown the Egyptian army and the people are freed. Is Yahweh with us or not? And they go into the wilderness for three days wandering without water. And they finally come to a place that is later called Mera. And there's water there, but it's bitter water. It's not potable. And the people complain and say, what are we going to drink? And Moses cries out to God and God says to him, you see that piece of wood over there? Take it, throw it in the water. And then he does and the water becomes drinkable and the people have what they need. Is Yahweh with us or not? They go on farther. And they come to a place called Elam, and there they find 12 springs of water and 70 palm trees for this large multitude of people wandering through the desert, and they find this wonderful oasis. Is God with us or not? And they come into the wilderness of sin, which is not a moral kind of sin, but just the name of the place. And they're hungry, and they complain to Moses and Aaron, and if they say, and they say rather, if only we, I love this, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and we ate our fill of bread. For you brought us out into this wilderness to kill us by hunger. And so God sends manna, this mysterious flaky substance. It looks like coriander seeds. It tastes like honey, and it appears on the ground around them. Every morning, enough for the day, they gather it up. And on the day before the Sabbath, they get twice as much so that they don't have to work on that holy day. And that food sustains them for 40 years. Is Yahweh with us or not? And then they come to Rephidim, the story that we read today, where there's no water. And the people say, why did you bring us out of Egypt? Was it just to kill us by thirst? 
And so God speaks to Moses, take some elders with you, take the staff that you used when you parted the rivers of the Nile, excuse me, of the Red Sea, and go out there and I'll show you a rock and you just whack that rock and you'll find some water. And he does, and it works. Is Yahweh with us or not? The answer clearly based on this series of events is yes. Yes, God is with us. And yes, we can forget. Time and again, the people of Israel were provided for by God. And time of again, uh, time and again, they forgot about it the next time they ran into trouble. This is not something we should blame them for because it is something that every one of us has done as well. We have these moments where we feel close to God. We have these moments when it seems like nothing can ever separate us from the love of God. And then we meet challenges and we, uh, we lose sight of what we had known before. But God is there, not always on our terms, not always in the way we expect, not always immediately evident to us, but always there to sustain us through the wilderness, and to sustain St. Paul's as well, this church. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit now. Because as the people of Israel were wandering for 40 years in the desert, you all have been going through a, a different kind of wilderness time. Not 40 years, but a good 26 months and counting without a rector. You were headed somewhere. You were headed toward that future with your next rector. And every day, this congregation gets to make a decision. Uh, and the decision is whether to say, wow, look at all that God has done and where God has brought us now. Wonder what's next. Or to say, this interim has lasted for 26 months. Is God with us or not? I am grateful, very grateful, that St. Paul's has not done that. That St. Paul's has chosen to simply marvel at God's work and to ask, what is next for us? And there's a lot of evidence that St. Paul's has done that, and all you need to do is look at what has occurred in this interim period so far. Look at the, uh, the, the internal work that's been done here during this time. Consider what the, the vestry and your leadership has accomplished. You have a new roof. You have new carpet. You have new paint. You have a new sound system. Thanks to the leadership of the ECW, you have new chairs in the parish hall. Tomorrow, you will have new windows in the basement so that all those children gathering down there will be able to escape safely in the event of a fire. If you didn't know that that was a problem before, just don't worry, it's not a problem anymore. You have a new logo. You have a new website. Your website has graduated from about 1996 to 2020. A congregation who's asking, is God with us or not, does not do all of those things. Those are the actions of a people preparing for what is next. And more importantly than those things is the growth in your ministries. We have seen the extraordinary things that have that have grown up out of this community. I talk about it all the time because I'm so impressed by it, but love period is an extraordinary thing that has happened here. Where the, a group of people in the community recognized an acute need, recognized that they had the resources to address it, and then did so. And, and they did so in an innovative way that allowed for people who work a lot, strange hours sometimes, people with young children, who still are able to come together and do this ministry because it doesn't depend upon a model of ministry that existed 50 years ago when people you know, tended to be home during the day and would be able to work together. But they found a new way to do things. And it is, it is something I hear about a lot in the Diocese of East Tennessee. People are really impressed with it. Other clergy ask me about it. You all have created a new Sunday School Committee in this time. And, and the adult formation program has transitioned from a Bible study led by the rector, who did it 
very, very well from what I hear and has, has broadened because in your context, you didn't have a full-time director who was able to do that. And so you all gathered together and created this program that we're, I don't know how many weeks now we've done uh, love of neighbor and ra racial reconciliation now that's coming to a close soon. We've done a series on women of the Bible. We've talked about medical ethics and we've drawn on the expertise of the community around us. And I hear about that too. I hear about it. Uh, I heard about it this week from someone who works at a, a nonprofit in town. They get our newsletter, our emails. And they, um, they said, we just want you, I just want you to know, we love what you guys do in Sunday school. Uh, we, we read your newsletter. You send out these articles um, to read in advance and we read them and we share them with our clients. And we're just so grateful for what you all do. We've certainly seen it in, in our feeding ministry. Right. I mean, okay, five years ago, the feeding ministry was collecting cans and bringing them to church on Sunday morning. 2017, uh, it began to work with the Chattanooga Area Food Bank and distributed 12,000 pounds of food that year. In 2020, we're on track to distribute almost 100,000 pounds of food. From cans to 12,000 to 48 to almost 100,000. The feeding ministry was awarded a federal grant of $110,000 to purchase refrigerators and shelving and a truck. We want a truck because we're going to start doing distributions from Walmart. Three days a week, they're going to give us their donations. We're going to bring them here to distribute to people. We uh, were looking, we were looking, I should say, at putting on a building in the parking lot next door uh, that we own. And we were raising the money for it and we were on track. And we had some business people in the community come and they, they talked with us and they said, you know, we can find the rest of the money that you need, but you need a bigger building. And so we looked around and, um, and the vestry last week voted that we could, uh, that we should expand the feeding ministry beyond the original expansion that we had in mind to look at possible rental opportunities in the area where we could move in and do the work more efficiently without having to build something. And so we're working on that. And this is something really important that, again, not a lot of churches think to do, but you all did. And that is to think about the long-term sustainability of the ministry and to get money through that federal grant to pay for an AmeriCorps VISTA worker whose job is to develop the ministry so that it can be sustainable in the long term. Okay. Those are not the decisions of people asking, is God with us or not? Those are the decisions of people trusting that God is with them. And I have to say, the way pieces have fallen together around all of those things have convinced me that God is the one making it work. And that you all are calling on God and expecting God and to go and going with God when it happens. And the last thing I want to point out about how great you guys are, this is a you guys are great sermon. Um, <laughs> Look at the vestry of St. Paul's and you will find that there are as many members on that vestry under the age of 45 as there are over the age of 45. In an Episcopal church these days, that is a rarity. And that is certainly not intended as a knock on age or experience. But what it does is it, it indicates that the people who have that experience right now are working with the people who in 30 years are also going to have that experience and will be working with the next generation to come after them. Once again, the community expecting good things to happen. God looked at this place and, and said, hey, you guys, you know, take that stick and go strike that rock. And, and you did. It's not the end of the story. There are more challenges to come. There always are. You'll have to get your new rector, for example. You'll have to get to know your new rector as well. And your new rector will not be Henry Harrison, will not be Drew Bunting. It will take time. And also this pandemic may delay the arrival of your new rector, not just by slowing down the process, but also it may be that you have a new rector called and and ready, but you have to wait because some of the circumstances around the pandemic have to be resolved. And the pandemic may result in future uh, financial challenges for the congregation. There may be program changes to come based on either the, 
um, discernment you do with your new rector or with changing circumstances on the ground in your community. So there, there will be bumps in the road, there will be challenges ahead, but uh, when that happens, and it's going to happen, you will have the same question before you uh, that you've had all along. You can say, is God with us or not? Or you can remember how far God has brought you already. You can remember that during this wilderness time of a lengthy interim and a global pandemic, the people of this community led by God took up the tools at hand and struck a rock and watched amazing things come out. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
-hmm. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that, that we, we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed, especially Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Bunny Lawton, and Gladys Smith, eternal rest. Let it light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May, May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us our needs and those of others. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our, our Father, who art, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to um, remember, I'll, I'll cut out this part of the recording, so feel free to uh, un under your cameras, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. With you. Now, live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.